Beloved, when I gave all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation, it was needful for me to write unto you and exhort you that you should earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. to say the emergent church movement is a complete redefinition of Christianity. Now, I'm going to do something that I try to talk myself out of doing, but I feel compelled to do this. Later on in my notes, I have things written down, and I've got a number of spots where I can jump forward because I've never put this material together in this way, and I don't want to go too long. But I can tell you this much. Whatever the next thing that comes along is, you have to put it to the same test that I put the emergent church to. You have to test it biblically and you have to understand how to do that. I think to be good at discernment, you have to practice discernment. The same way that a doctor practices medicine. They get better as they go along. Gulp, we think, as we go to the doctor's office. But they, that's the idea. Well, to be good at discernment, you need to, to, to uh, massage that mis discernment muscle in your brain. And let God speak to your heart about things. But you have to know what the scripture says. This takes work, in other words. It won't just come along just because you heard one message at a conference somewhere with somebody talking about this issue. It's because you've taken the, made the decision and taken the time to learn what you believe and to be able to share it then with whoever God brings before you. He asked me what I thought maybe one of the biggest problems were in the church, and I said the fact that most of the church doesn't know what the central essential doctrines of the faith are. They know all about having a happy family and having a happy life, and they know all about uh, the, the you know, feel-good sermons and the user-friendly sermons about, about life here on earth, but they don't know or understand eternity. Many of the new ones that have just come into our churches have not been taught these doctrines and don't understand that we're here to prepare people to get to heaven. We're here to explain to them, to show them, to lead them to a place where they have the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. But instead, we're telling them all about how to live their lives today. And we're ignoring the things that the church was built on in the first century. Again, the validation for all these practices is that some ancient Christians supposedly employed them. Is, is the return to the labyrinth and to yoga and to Lectio Divina and all these things, bringing it into Protestantism, into evangelicalism no less, is this just a return to ancient Christianity of some sort? Mm -mm. Paul didn't uh, walk the labyrinth. Timothy didn't do yoga. We don't see any of this stuff in the Bible. That's the point. If an ancient Christian did it, I would then begin to think, okay, they were influenced by some other religious idea in the process. We don't know what they believed in the Middle Ages necessarily, but they might be what we would call New Agers today. Yet they would have claimed to have been Christians. See, the Bible doesn't teach these practices. That's the point. What happened to our leaders? What happened to our evangelical leaders? What happened to our seminaries and Bible colleges? I want to know. What's happening to us is what I really want to know. What happened? Don't they know what Galatians 1 declares? Don't they read what the scripture says and follow it? Or are they just more interested in having a spiritual experience and being popular with their peers? Is this all it took? One culture, one group of people who decided they wanted to reject biblical Christianity because it was too narrow? Was popularity and acceptance with the post millennials the golden calf of our time? It would seem in some cases that's what it is. Maybe it was the promise of church growth by the church growth gurus and the problems they have caused. They become victims of prophets and priests who have influenced them and then they influence others. They say unity is the most important thing. That's the same cry we get out of Rome, by the way. But understand that it's just not about unity either. 
because now they've decided that mysticism is a good, a, a good replacement for the spiritual parts of what evangelicals have always believed. And why is mysticism that replacement? Listen carefully. It's because if you're not born again, you still have a spiritual void inside you and you're looking for something to massage it. And that's why mysticism has become so big in our churches. Because people are void, bankrupt of the power of the Holy Spirit living within them. And they need something to fill that void. That's why mysticism has become what it is around us. If you're not born again, you're looking for something. You better be looking for Jesus. That's the point. 